What's up, Blues fans? Alex Ferrario with you after a Blues victory, so nice to say, in overtime against the Vancouver Canucks to pull themselves within a game of this best of seven series. So my Ferrario five from game number three, right? Let's start with the first one. You got the goaltending. Jake Allen was superb in that hockey game. He stopped breakaways. He stopped odd man rushes. He stopped power plays, deflections. Jake Allen was just what the Blues needed. He was making the big time saves that unfortunately Bennington just wasn't making in those first couple of games. You need those saves from your goaltender to provide that energy boost and that momentum shift in the game. And that's exactly what Jake Allen did. When things weren't going right for the Blues, Jake Allen came up big so that the team paid him off later on in the hockey game. So that's exactly what they need. Who knows if you go back to Jake Allen, but stopping 39 of 41 shots in a game that you really only saw one since this return to play has started, that's a strong performance by Jake Allen. Second takeaway was the five-on-five -five play. The Blues, without question, were the better five-on-five -five team in this game. If you look at what has happened in these first three games, power plays, shorthanded goals. That's where Vancouver is dangerous. But when you keep it at five on five, the Blues get back to their style. They cycle the puck. They forecheck. They keep the opposition from doing anything past the neutral zone. And when their guys don't have the puck on their sticks, the Blues are the better team. So at five on five play, the Blues got back to that style in game number three. And they were the better team last night against Vancouver. Third takeaway, the physicality in this one. David Perron is becoming a pest in the NHL. If he's on any other team, you hate to play him. But he's on this team, he makes everyone else hate to play him. He was getting under the skin of Quinn Hughes, of Antoine Roussel, of Bo Horvat, of freaking Stetcher. Stetcher, the defenseman who scored the goal against the Blues in game number one, he took a roughing penalty with Perron. Perron is getting in the head of guys like Markstrom, too. And Joe Vitale called Marks from a spaz in our broadcast. And you can see that in the way that he's a goaltender. When he's locked in, he's good. But when you get him out of his comfort zone, when you're taking those extra whacks at his pads, that's where you be that's where you're able to dive into the play. So smart play there by Markstrom, or by Perron, that is, to get in the head of Jacob Markstrom. Fourth takeaway: players stepped up when you need them to. You had no Tarasenko, no Steen, no Brower in the game. So you throw in a McEachran, a De La Rose, and a, Ter and a Cairo. You're thinking, uh-oh, we might be in trouble here. Two of those three were very influential tonight. And I, I should say three of them. McEachran had a lot of hits and physicality on that fourth line. De La Rose was 50% from the face-off circle, won a lot of defensive face-offs for you, specifically on the penalty kill. And Jordan Cairo, guys, Jordan Cairo went from the bottom to the top of that line. He was creating offense. He had four shot attempts, two shots on goal. He was creating offense for that top line of Braden Shen and Tyler Bozak, where hence Braden Shen scores the game winning goal in overtime. So that was a really strong performance by guys that stepped up when you truly needed them to. And hopefully you'll have an Ivan Barbashev back in the next couple of days. Hopefully Tarasenko will be back in the lineup for game number four. But right now the depth showed up for the Blues, which is what they desperately desperately needed. My fifth takeaway, my Ferrario 5, the defenseman, specifically Justin Falk. This guy has been the butt of every joke. He has been um, under so much scrutiny and spotlight throughout the regular season that you're kind of wondering if this guy was ever going to pay off. Now, look, you got a seven-year extension. People still may see that as a lot of money for a guy that you don't really know much about. But Justin Falk was the best player on the ice in game number three. Had 11 shot attempts, Four shots on goal. He scored the one goal. Defensively, he's physically a presence for you in front of the net, but he creates the rush going north to south. He helps a neutral zone rush that really wasn't that good last night against Vancouver in the first couple of periods. Justin Falk was a difference maker, and he looked like the Justin Falk from the Carolina Hurricanes days. If he can play that way throughout this series, the Blues will be the toughest team to beat in terms of the defenseman. So Justin Falk played a phenomenal game and picked up a lot of the slack for the defensemen that struggled a little bit. Colton Pareko, Marco Scandella, they gave up a couple of turnovers that resulted in goals or chances. 
Justin Falk was an offensive weapon for you and a defensive weapon for you, which is a really good sign moving forward for the St. Louis Blues hockey team. So again, my Ferrari 05 from game number three. Number one was Jake Allen. Superb, outstanding performance to prove that you have two goaltenders. Number two, the four check, the five on five play. The Blues are the better team at five on five. Number three, the physicality. Perron and company are getting in the heads of this Vancouver Canucks team, which is a very good thing. Number four, players stepping up like Jordan Cairo, Mackenzie McEachern, De La Rose coming up big when the Blues needed them. And five, Justin Falk was a weapon for this team and the best player on the ice in game number three. So we'll see what game number four has to offer. Could it be Vancouver going up three to one? Could it be the Blues tying the series at two? I'll say this, the momentum's on the Blues side. So we'll talk to you after tomorrow night's game, or I guess I should say tonight's game, after hopefully another Blues victory.